Welcome back to Passionately Catholic. I'm Anthony Digman, and together we are falling more in love with God, enriching our prayer life and growing in virtue as we explore one of the greatest spiritual classics of all time, Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. Today is Part 3, Chapter 36, titled, Of a Well-Balanced, Reasonable Mind. Be sure to find the link in the description below to get your free copy of the book, sign up for emails with each video of this series in sequential order, and join our Passionately Catholic Facebook group. Please subscribe, like, and share this video so that you can help evangelize with us. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be to you, God, as we come before you in our brokenness and sorrow for our sin. We thank you for your unconditional love and mercy. Please grant the prayers we offer today, and in all things, thy will be done. Come, Holy Spirit, and St. Francis de Sales, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Reason is the special characteristic of man, and yet it is a rare thing to find really reasonable men, all the more that self-love hinders reason and beguiles us insensibly into all manner of trifling, but yet dangerous acts of injustice and untruth which, like the little foxes in the canticles, spoil our vines, while just because they are trifling, people pay no attention to them, and because they are numerous, they do infinite harm. Let me give some instances of what I mean. We find fault with our neighbor very readily for a small matter, while we pass over great things in ourselves. We strive to sell dear and buy cheap. We are eager to deal out strict justice to others, but to obtain indulgence for ourselves. We expect a good construction to be put on all we say, but we are sensitive and critical as to our neighbor's words. We expect him to let us have whatever we want for money, when it would be more reasonable to let him keep that which is his, if he desires to do so, and leave us to keep our gold. We are vexed with him because he will not accommodate us, while perhaps he has better reason to be vexed with us for wanting to disturb him. If we have a liking for any one particular thing, we despise all else and reject whatever does not precisely suit our taste. If some inferior is unacceptable to us, or we have once caught him in error, he is sure to be wrong in our eyes, whatever he may do, and we are forever thwarting or looking coldly on him, while on the other hand, someone who happens to please us is sure to be right. Sometimes even parents show unfair preference for a child endowed with personal gifts over one afflicted with some physical imperfection. We put the rich before the poor, although they may have less claim and be less worthy. We even give preference to well-dressed people. We are strict in exacting our own rights, but expect others to be yielding as to theirs. We complain freely of our neighbors, but we do not like them to make any complaints of us. Whatever we do for them appears very great in our sight, but what they do for us counts as nothing." In a word, we are like the Pampelagonian partridge, which has two hearts, for we have a very tender, pitiful, easy heart toward ourselves, and one which is hard, harsh, and strict towards our neighbor. We have two scales, one wherein to measure our own goods to the best advantage, and the other to weigh our neighbors to the worst. Holy Scripture tells us that lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord, and a double heart, with one measure there whereby to receive and another to give, is also abominable in his sight. Fascinating stuff here, I think, you know, considering how we relate to ourselves and how we relate to others. We tend to be very very giving, generous with ourselves and, and a lot more strict with others. Whereas I look upon saints who I think tend to be a lot more generous to others and a lot more strict upon themselves. And that's the kind of shift that we need to have take place. Okay, it's really, really good stuff here for us to reflect on. One of the things that comes to mind, because I've recently been dealing with um, buying and selling vehicles through private party, is I always notice whenever it comes, and, and I definitely notice what St. Francis is getting at in my own heart, whenever somebody is selling something, 
their value of it, and of course it's in their own interest, but their value of it tends to be extra high. And then when somebody's buying something, obviously they want it cheaper and their value of it initially is going to be quite low. And the trick, and this is something that as a seller, I really try to take under consideration and even as a buyer, as you know, but as a seller to go, okay, wait a minute, like I'm going to end up getting less for this than what I really think it's worth and what I want. And they're really, to put myself in their shoes, they're going to end up paying more than they're going to want to pay for it or maybe a little bit more than what they think that it's worth just to get it because it might work better for them. So the trick is, is to find charitably that middle ground. Continuing, be just and fair in all you do. Always put yourself in your neighbor's place and put him into yours, and then you will judge fairly. Sell as you would buy, and buy as you would sell, and your buying and selling will alike be honest. These little dishonesties seem unimportant because we are not obliged to make restitution, and we have, after all, only taken that which we might demand according to the strict letter of the law. But, nevertheless, they are sins against right and charity, and are mere trickery, greatly needing correction. Nor does anyone ever lose by being generous, noble-hearted, and courteous." Be sure then often to examine your dealings with your neighbor, whether your heart is right towards him, as you would have his toward you were things reversed. This is the true test of reason. When Trajan was blamed by his confidential friends for making the imperial presence too accessible, he replied, Does it not behoove me to strive to be such an emperor towards my subjects as I should wish to meet were I the subject? Great stuff, okay? Now, this definitely correlates back to what I was talking about in terms of selling the van, trying to put myself in the buyer's shoes when I'm selling my van or in, in, you know, as a buyer, you know, doing likewise, flipping that stuff around. You know, the golden rule, okay, of treat others the way that you would want to be treated really is key here. And St. Francis is all about love and good relationships and maintaining all of that good stuff and growing in virtue. And I love what he has to say early on in this uh, piece about nor does anyone ever lose by being generous, noble-hearted, and courteous. Now, somebody might object and say, well, in the world, you know, you might lose money and status and opportunity by being noble and generous and courteous, okay, noble-hearted. But in terms of the spiritual life, that which really matters, you can't, okay? That, that you're not going to lose by any means because God is always more generous than we are. Beautiful stuff. Remember, spend at least 10 minutes today in silent prayer with God. Special thanks to all of our patrons who made this episode and all that we do at Passionately Catholic possible. Find our Patreon link below to join in our mission. Make it a great day, my friend. God bless you, and I look forward to joining you again in the next episode. 